Millennials are the most racially diverse generation of all time. We're a mix of religions, cultures, and political views. And when it comes to dating, we're not as traditional as those before us. How much does race or religion, even politics, matter when you're on the prowl? Or does it matter at all? It's gonna be a hot conversation. This is what I wish you knew about being down with the swirl. Hey everybody, I'm Byron Lewis, and welcome to I Wish You Knew. Being down with the swirl means that you're open to dating people outside of your race or ethnic group. And for millennials, a recent poll by the Pew Research Center revealed that we support the swirl more than previous generations ever before. But what about religion? Does that matter? And are you cutting down the dating pool by limiting your options? Here to tell you what they wish you knew are... Hey, I'm Wainika. How's it going? It's Zeppelin. Hi, I'm Brittany Timmons. Hi, I'm Helen. So panel, who's down with the swirl and why or why not? Can you can we expound on this? I mean, I'm down. I, my thing is like I'm down if you, if you whatever you like I love. So me personally, I've not um, been outside of my race dating anybody. I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. All right, look, look, okay, Zach, we, I haven't, but um, I'm not opposed to it or like I'm not against it at all. But I just haven't done it. Okay. So. And what about you, Zeb? Because yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open like two doors, baby. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it, open to, like two Lambo to, doors. You know Let's what I'm saying? It. To me, it, hey. it, it doesn't have anything to do with you know color or mm -hmm. or religion or your political views. It, it, it's more like your values. That's the biggest thing, kind of, exactly. for me. Like, it's okay. like, can we connect mm -hmm. uh, on, on on every front? Do we share the same sort of like core values? And if that's there, it don't really matter where you come from or or who you are. So I'm 100% pro, you know, with it. Pro, I can co-sign that. Pro it do what it do. I right? think for me, I haven't been outside my race either, mm -hmm. but I don't think I've experienced that. I haven't been mm -hmm. open to that. Mm -hmm. I will maybe if the right man comes along. <laughs> but right now I have this admiration and this desire to be with a person that's within my race. I'm just in love with the black man. I know yeah. all of them ain't Amen. put together and Amen. all of them ain't right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I would like to be with an African American male if that's okay. So there's like a loyalty there. You feel like it's it, a loyalty, it's like and, it's, a, and okay. I think it comes from when I was a little girl and, and growing up with my father. I admire my father. Mm -hmm. I admire the man that he is, and the and the, the provider, the husband that I see him um, be to my mother, the father he is to me and my siblings. I admire that, and I just know it's the African American male that can do the same thing for me. But again, I'm open to it. I just ain't experienced. What about you, Helen? That's so sweet. Is it? <laughs> Talking about your dad and everything. Um, I'm open to I'm not going to date a Trump supporter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a sure. unanimous that's thing. Oh, no, no, not unanimous, because no, Zep's he's, saying he's, he's okay with that. that. Uh, cool. he's think, you got to think about that, Zep. Like, Zep really think is, about everything that's been going on and Truly. and their values if they're about, they, okay. it's about the values person, that, you're right it's about the values you, that, you're right it is about, it's the, about values. the values that, I, I can't go either way with that but no but, okay. but go ahead go ahead though yeah oh, no, that was it. okay just, <laughs> oh, you just couldn't so you like, look, i'm open but my one preference is no trump supporters okay. and that's my it. one preference is they have to be a feminist but mm -hmm. okay that's i agree it. Yeah. that's, that's important time. yeah that's because i think uh, when you share some of the same values, your conversations are not dry. I, I don't know. This is something that I've witnessed. I've seen a lot of couples that are, um, I don't want to box anybody in, but like, for instance, in college, I've seen a lot of black couples together. When they would be sitting down to lunch or dinner, their conversations would be kind of flat. They wouldn't talk as much. It would kind of be quiet. And then I would look at other people and people that are um, down with the swirl, um, and they would just be vibrant. And I think it's because there's a common interest there. Or there's because when you are dating someone that looks like you, automatically you gravitate towards them because y'all look alike. Mm -hmm. But when you go outside of that, yeah. you learn something else about them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so your conversations, not saying that we don't have them, because I date yeah. a black guy right now, and he's amazing. Oh. And, um, yes, we do! <laughs> <laughs> But he's amazing, and because we're not, it's not superficial. But when you date somebody initially, just based off how they look, mm -hmm. it's like 
that's what you gravitate towards. So you don't explore more of their mind or who they yeah. are, what they, y'all don't talk a lot, you know? Yeah, right. Well, I heard Zeb just mumble over here, it's comfortable. I don't think it's it comfortable, no, it's it just. Is. You don't wanna go outside your comfort zone. So but I mean, if, I, if I've been raised, not saying that DC doesn't have all other ethnicities to offer, okay. but if I've just been in this area and I've been in Greensboro, North Carolina dating mm -hmm. and a certain mm -hmm. race ain't looking my way, mm -hmm. I mean, just as a woman, period, I'm not going to go chase you down. If you come to me, I might have an open mind, but mm. I think that goes back to the topic of the conversation is who's down with the swear if you ain't down with but it, I if you're mean, not even interested in, in my type, you're not going to look my way. Race and ethnicity and how you look is one thing, but, okay, let's say you found, you know, your perfect black man or you found your person, your, your, your perfect whatever. What mm -hmm. if their religion wasn't around what you wanted or... Like you said, your values, they just weren't lining up. Would you, would you be able to mm. kind of overlook that just because you like the way they look or overlook that just because they're black or? For me, if you don't believe in the Jesus Christ, mm. you can leave. Uh, okay. Let's touch I'm just not, That's come true. on. That's like, true. I'm not here for it because okay. at the end of the day, it's not just something I practice, it's life and death mm -hmm. for me. There's mm -hmm. no way mm -hmm. that, that I'm going to be living and you're going to be dead and we're going to work together. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I think, you know, outside, no, do what you want, but for me, who I date and who I'm going to spend this time and build with, honey, mm -hmm. come on, I need you to be praying for me on your knees. And like, if let's I can go. piggyback, I agree. Not that you, you, you don't have to be, I go to church every day and things like this, mm -hmm. but I need you to have the same faith that I have. I can't be unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. That matters to me. So to as I, yeah. especially, and it only kind of happened when I got into this age and I'm like, okay, I'm this age and if I wanted to marry somebody, I could do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to live my life with you being down here and me being mm -hmm. up here mm -hmm. faith-wise and religious-wise. Pulling wise. Away, honey. It, okay? I mean, that, that, that makes sense, but like, what does politics have to necessarily, mm. you know, do with that? Like, so I understand how religion could be, that's, you know, rooted in like your core values, but politics is like, that's, a lot of it is like opinions on, on how you feel things should kind of go with, you know, the country. Why is everybody so against dating a Trump supporter? The like, reason why I can't date a Trump supporter, because at the end of the day, the values of just what I believe in, being good, being a good Samaritan, mm -hmm. not saying things just not everybody for is perfect, rise. Though. No, I don't think people are perfect, but I just think that uh -oh. just morally, I okay, can't do you, it. Okay, go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> overlooked, grab her by the... Can we say it on We can go on with that ahead. for, like, I mean, come on, <laughs> this dude is amazing. We, we, could, we could do that all day, but uh, hold that thought. We have, we have to take a quick break, but first, it's trivia time. Name that groundbreaking film that was one of the first to explore interracial dating and marriage. Stay tuned to see if you're right. <laughs> Welcome back. The film Loving is about an interracial couple from Virginia that fought for nine years for their right to live as family in their own hometown. Mm. Take a look. I'm gonna build you a house. Right here. Our house. What you doing in bed with that woman? I'm his wife. That's no good here. Richard Perry Loving being a white person and Mildred Jeter being a colored person did unlawfully cohabitate as man and wife. Richard? That ain't right! I believe this is a battle that could go all the way to the Supreme Court. I mean, we ain't hurting anybody. The Loving case set a precedent for overturning laws that prohibited interracial marriage. Panel, why do you think this message in this film is, is just so vital and important in this country? I think it's important because civil liberties, civil rights are, I, I think everybody just deserves that. Um, you can't really tell a person who they, to, to love a person and then to want to marry them is, I mean, that's a rarity. So when someone finds mm -hmm. that, for you to just say they can't do it based off of something, you know, that they were born this way or th this is how they were, that's not really fair. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's important. And then it just speaks to just civil rights. Like, these are rights that everybody else has. So why am I not entitled right. to love who I, you know, be, who I, be with who I want to be with? 
important. I think it's important for a time such as today because that's what we need. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's not what's shown and it's, we're not going to get it overnight, but in a time such as today, I wish we could just see past the color of people's skin mm -hmm. and just understanding being human and respecting one another. But I think the movie overall, it just shows what, how love can really overpower um, politics, rules, and certain things like that because at a time period where the Lovings were living was a time that this man was supposed to look at her with such disgust. hate and disgust mm. and things mm. like that. For, so for him to want to commit himself to being her man and wanting to really be with her, I respect that. Like, that's real love. And if I can find that type of love with anybody... I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Yeah. I feel like, um, me personally, this, this movie speaks to just not even, you know, your constitutional right of the, you know, life, liberty, and the mm -hmm. pursuit of happiness. I just think it speaks to your, the human need and the human want to be loved because yeah. mm. these people not only saw past color, they not only saw past, you know, their times, they, yeah. just, they just focused on each other. Yeah. And I think in a lot of relationships, um, these days, especially with technology and social media, like you get caught in a lot of other stuff yeah. rather than the person that you, who you're supposed to be loving. Right. Um, I mean, and back then, I mean, they had technology and TV and stuff, yeah. but they weren't as in, engulfed in it as we are. Not at all, yeah. And I think nowadays, if millennials, you know, like us, watch this movie and mm. see how in tune with each other that mm. these two people were who are different, different races, different ethnicities, all of that other stuff, they, they would kind of use that in, in their own lives to take that to their own relationships mm -hmm. because you're right, we need love like in in this country, in this world today because it's, it's just too much craziness going on. Yeah, up until recently, honey, that movie didn't set the bar because it's going to show people that he out here building houses, yeah. Yeah. Yes, going to the Supreme okay. Court. I did, yes, listen, listen, I got to chime in. in. I got to chime in. I did, I told house. Zep, I was yeah. like, that's a real man right there. He walked to a spot. He's going to build you a house yeah. right yeah. here. I'm not going to buy nothing. I'm going to just build it out. Now, look, I mean, I, I agree. I think it kind of goes back to the, the whole thing about, like, their core values. Like, they shared a same core value, mm -hmm. which I think enabled them to get through all of those difficult times and legal procedures mm -hmm. that they had to go through in order to fight it because they did both have that same belief, like, mm -hmm. we deserve to be together. Like, they both fought on the same field for something. Mm -hmm. I think that's extremely powerful because, I mean, how many relationships, millennial relationships, do you mm -hmm. know where people, like, have that one, like they're both fighting for the same sort of thing exactly. and I think when you are that strengthens the bond even more because you got that same you know goal now how do you think it would have it would have gone down if we, if that scenario would have gone down in today's time in like, today's time like, sure, please. Twitter would have been lit. I don't it, I don't it wouldn't have been the same for yeah. the for that to have gone to the Supreme Court and things like that and for the people of power to want to deal with that issue and take it on and fix it I don't think it would have happened with my with my president, with Barack Obama. It would have had an open heart to be, you know, for things to be done. But today's time, I don't think it's looked at what the same way. What about you, Helen? Chime in, like, how do you... Well, I know, like, the his I'm from Virginia, so, like, okay. the historical case was actually, they got married, and, like, the people in the town didn't really care. And then I think it was... It was something wild, like they got married in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. kind of like, um, like the gay marriage cases here, where we're talking about like if interracial um, marriage licenses from other um, districts could mm. count in Virginia, which mm. where it was outlawed. So it's kind of like the gay marriage stuff, where it's like if you get married in California, does it count when you move to Virginia? Mm -hmm. um, and then they, so they they got married in Washington D.C. and then they moved back to Virginia, and then. Um, like one of them got banished, so like mm. they weren't allowed to live together. So um, I think it was the guy who was required to live in D.C., and that was the issue where it was like they had kids and the dad was banished outside of Virginia because they were married, which mm. is like uh, the stakes were a lot higher than what we thought it was. And to me, that starts the breakup of a of a family just because they don't. I, I, it's weird to me that people, if you see two people that want to be together or they want to do something the right way, let them do it. You know, in they in their own space. I think that's, perfect, that's yeah. weird. I think it would have worked out though. Now, in the sense of that, because of social media, I think this story would have spread a like lot wildfire. quicker, right? Yeah, and I yeah. think more media attention, it would have become like a real spectacle. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, more light would have been shown on it. So as many hardships as they went through, it might have cut that process down because of how many people were kind of, you know, standing against it, just like, you know, we saw with, you know, some cases of, uh, of, of homosexual uh, homosexuality. I so. would have hoped that it would have made it through and got fixed. But I think even now with times with homosexuality, it's still a fight. Those people are still fighting to have an equal 
say in yeah. certain states and things like that. So yeah. I don't know if it would have, because even today, some people still look down on interracial relationships. Great topic, guys. Which we should. More on this world when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. <laughs> During the break, uh, we, we were having a great conversation. Um, you want to you wanna pose that question again, Zep? Yeah, so, uh, but I think we have to start with the context, right? Brittany has okay. to give the context of she was saying that she doesn't uh, agree with African-American men who say why they don't like black women. So I think we have to start there in order to kind of... Okay. I said I don't agree with, with people that say that they don't date inside their race because mm -hmm. this person is wretched, this person has an attitude problem, this person, this and that. Angry. I have a problem, angry. I have a problem with that because, for one, you're putting all, let's say, black women into one category. Okay. And your reasons why is, is just is stupid and it's absurd. How is it stupid if that's what they've experienced? So like, what if they have only had interactions with... Then maybe that, you that... need to change the type of woman that you try to date. If you're going for this girl that may be stuck up or may be conceited, that's oh. you. Make an adjustment <laughs> and stop dating this woman <laughs> that seems stuck up and seems so he, arrogant and so, curses so he, herself So that I way. am making an adjustment and I'm saying I'm not dealing with you at all and that, I'm going outside the I don't race. respect that's that, that. And if that's what you do, I will sing at your wedding. <laughs> Hire me, <laughs> but I do not agree. You but probably I do not agree. the people that's in there, the first that I'm No, I make my coin and sing at that wedding. <laughs> okay. But I still have my, my opinion on thinking that the reasons why, because my thing is this, Zep, you, have, you, you date outside your race, you have yep. a baby, your child is still going, let's say she's a girl, let's claim it for what it is, mm -hmm. she's going to be a girl, she's going to be half African-American. Okay. So now do you despise your daughter because she's going to have an attitude and she's going to... No. You can't you say don't. things uh, like uh, that. Uh, so that means you, you talking about your aunt, your, your cousin, your sister. You. That's <laughs> what happened. Got him. Go ahead. Yeah, we got him. He can't exactly. We're not talking about dis no. despising. We're, t we're talking about... My relationship with my daughter has nothing to do with the person who I'm spending my quality time with. Those are, those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Those, but, I can teach her the qualities that I don't necessarily like or that I'm I'm talking about. So like, then she'll be the those, only one. Amazing topic. I, <laughs> Zep, Zep, come on, man. You, you're just killing it. But, I mean, we're, we're going to switch it up a bit. So before you, you get that number or even get here, mm -hmm. um, what, what are some of the best and worst pickup lines you've, you've heard? Because, I mean, in order to get to that, you know, yeah. type of woman that you want, you know, or that baby, you know, how do you, how do you how do you get her attention? You know, you just hey, what's up? You know? Yeah, you know, pretty much go ahead and slide in the DM real quick. You really? know, what I mean, but like, what you say the... when you slide in? Yeah, what you say? Hey, uh, hey big what's going uh, on? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hey, big head. Nah, right. hey, hey, big head. That's uh, a, that's another thing. I mean, it's I don't know, man. It just is situational. Is and it's I don't know. It's situational. But do y'all use pickup lines? Do you in your now, past? Well. In, in my past. Yeah, tell the story you told me earlier, man. Talk, uh, yeah, yeah. Talk, okay. tell the story. She, she's going to kill me. Um, <laughs> well, the only, I'm not going to say the only pickup line I've ever used, but the one that kind of sealed the deal for me was um, my girlfriend now, five years, we have a baby and all that awesome stuff. Um, I found out she had a Sprint phone, and I, I too had Sprint. Now, it's, it's, it's a funny, cheesy line, but before I left work that day, I was like, so can your Sprint text my Sprint? Now, she laughed at me for about two minutes, but I mean, ultimately, it worked out. So, it was a cheesy pickup line, See, but sometimes, but it sometimes, corny, I'm, it was kind of corny, but I mean, it was cute. I said no, it with a smile. Sometimes you can only say it with works. a smile, you know? Yeah. You can't just say something off the wall. Because once know. you get a girl laughing, I feel like you kind of in there. You kind of. Exactly. Because that's how it was for me. I know a guy, he out, we was in Adams Morgan, a popular place, and um, it was like real late at night, and then we walk in, he said he's trying to talk to me, whatever, he got dreads. I'm sorry, I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh no, okay, <laughs> I have a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so then he was like, oh, how long you had that problem? I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, I like you him. Get, get, but, no, I have a boyfriend. Bye. Oh, okay. You can leave. But you, what's your worst pickup line that you've heard? I, I was not a pickup line, but I just don't like it when people, um, like, you see that one guy in the room and he goes to every single girl. 
<laughs> yeah, about that. I've watched you prance around the club all night, calling <laughs> everybody, and now you know made your way. Intervention yeah, that you but... I think the worst pickup line I've heard, I've heard a lot, but <laughs> because I just think it's really absurd, some the things that people say. But one of the worst ones was it was based on the length of my legs and heels and stuff like that. And he has said some, he was basically just making comments towards my legs. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just made it seem like, are you All looking physical. at me as a, yeah, what, I hope this isn't it. I hope you got something else, mm -hmm. or I hope this is a joke. <laughs> because normally when people say stuff like that, I laugh at it, and mm -hmm. I say nice one, and mm -hmm. I keep it moving. Good, good job. Because that, that didn't capture my attention. What about you, Zap? I mean, you, you gotta be killing him with that coat, man. You know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not like a pickup blind type of person, though. It's kind of corny to me. Yeah. Uh, right, so, what do you do, Zap? So, when you see somebody, what is it? Let's set up a scenario. Yeah. So, you see somebody, so you want her, y'all been making eye contact all night. Mm -hmm. What does the man Zap go do? Hey, I'm Zap. Uh, I don't know. Probably buy her a drink or something. Slightly. <laughs> okay. But wait, so you know have, like, you know. have y'all ever used pickup lines? Yeah, but as, it was a bad. It, like it was a deer. It was like okay. a deer. Go ahead and have you ever something. pursued? But have y'all ever pursued a guy? Like, have you walked up to a guy and been like, "Oh, hey, what's no. poppin'? <laughs> I can't let myself do that. What's wrong with that? Yeah, no. Because. First, let me tell you, what's wrong with it for me, honey? Scripture says the man that finds a wife right. finds favor and right. is good. You so should find me because man. my so, thing is, if I, I go after you, you gonna think this is how that relationship is gonna work. Mm -hmm. That are you ever going to me? Is are you ever going to step up and be the man? Because if I had to go approach you and make all this stuff happen and initiate a date and you still acting. Could you lead and have you not? Head? You're not going to do nothing. Like, you're just going to be this person that lags along. You're going out of order. I mean, I, I've, I've, been, I've been pursuing from, from day one. You know, I, I still got to find ways to, to make her, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just relationship. You got to make it work. But um, I've always been the pursuer and not the pursuee. Like, okay, when I perform places, maybe, but that was only just because, you know, I was a musician and things like that. But when it came to, like, relationships and where I am now, it was like... Nah, it was just me going for her, and you know, I mean, she wasn't interested at first. That's understandable, but uh, I mean, now I want her over, and we have a beautiful daughter. So see, yeah. see what pursuing can get you, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. My brother did that, and there, guys, I'm going to be an aunt. My brother's mm -hmm. um, wife, he, she, admit, she said I didn't like him at first. I knew him through mutual friends and stuff, but she was not giving him the time of day. But now mm. they're married, yeah. and mm. they're about to have a baby. Well, she loves so me works. now. She loves me now. So. <laughs> uh, that's all the time we have for this edition of I Wish You Knew. Thanks for watching. But before we go, the answer to the trivia question is... Guess, guess who's coming, coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner? 1967's Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was one of the first films to explore interracial dating and marriage. Part comedy, part drama, it stars Sidney Poitier, Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy, and Catherine Huffman. See you next time. I didn't know that. I had no idea. It was probably a black woman.